Hello, friends. It is your moderator to the chat, Rosa Scheib, once again, giving you my thoughts and live reactions to this episode. Um, I know some people are going to have get upset with this, that it's too similar to season two, where it was like a slow down, a little bit emotional, not enough the action, considering that we've had like almost four straight episodes of just straight stage two-ness. Uh, but I think it was necessary, a breather, a slow down before, I guess you could say the exit for season, the end of season three, which I'm not really looking forward to. Um, yeah, Elliot's really messed up, okay? He's really, really, really messed up individual. We kind of already knew this with the split personality, that, but that's kind of a bit understandable. I mean, there's enough um, medical awareness and knowledge of that where it's something that uh, is treatable. Not curable, but treatable that you could you could understand the illness and understand that maybe he has not much to say or control of his illness as he would like. And he, as he argued with Darlene about that, he said, you know, you know, I tried therapy. I tried uh, pills. I <laughs> put myself in jail and he won't go away. Uh, uh, see, Jim Will Camlin, season three has uh, episode nine and episode 10 left. It's a 10 episode season. So there's there's not that much left. And I think the next episode is named Stage 3. Um, I don't know what episode 10 is named, but we only have two episodes left. And I mean, first off, it's been three weeks since the last set of events, since Trenton and Moby have been killed and framed to be Iranian agents um, that are responsible for the creation of society. Uh, so we have another time jump. It's, of course, Back to the Future Day. We saw that in the episode where Elliot went with uh, Trenton's brother to the movie theater. And you kind of get uh, from that dialogue, not only you get a little bit about Elliot, but you also get a hint about Trenton. Trenton really cared about her family. This is why she was in it. I mean, she wasn't born in this country. Her and her family immigrated from, um, I'm assuming it was Iran. I don't think they really specify what Middle Eastern country is. And if they did, I apologize if I if I forgot about it. Um, and so she loved this country. She wanted her parents to not have to work their hands to death to basically have some piece of the American pie. She wanted to do better for them. And that's why she was in it. And she explained in season two to Darlene when she came back into the fold. Uh, she put her hacker name after her brother, her brother who said, you know, I can be the American president. You know, because I was the only one born in this country, and how cool is that? But, you know, he was talking in kind of dictatorship terms because, you know, America's a shitty country sometimes to his immigrants. It's a shitty country in general when it sometimes it treats his people. It just is. And this kid's getting the burden of it, that, you know, his sister being named a terrorist, you know. Uh, so you understand why he said he wanted people to do all like him and stuff, and he wanted to get the bad guys because he knows his sister's innocent. And his sister is innocent. She is not in any way, well, innocent enough in the sense that she's no way associated with Iran and she's not responsible for those 71 buildings going down. Um, but I, I'm a little disappointed in Trenton because I couldn't believe Elliot was the person that she sent the email to. <sighs> I was like, I was hoping for Darlene. I was hoping for Dom. But it turns out, you know, the theory that, um, you know, maybe. Uh... Oh, you want to join? Mm... I don't know if I'm ready for that yet, Jimmy. Sorry. Uh, Jim will. Um... You can type in questions if you if you have them. Um you know, that email that they showed at the end, and I'll talk about it in my uh, full review, and I'll, I'll try to put it in the stream so everyone can read it um, when I do that review. Uh, she said, you know, don't delete me, which is the title of the episode, but she said in the in the email, and you can find it online, that she was investigating Romero, and Romero had put keyloggers on everyone's um, computers at the Fund Society, and that the FBI was able to mirror uh, Romero's hard drive, even though it kind of got fried there, it looks like they were able to retrieve something, but they weren't able to decrypt his drives. So from the, uh, she was able to intercept the FBI's, um, uh, 
property log, she says, if somehow Elliot were to get into Romero's drive, then they, if he somehow captured the encryption, the key and the key logs, then they can undo everything. That was, you know, this is why I said earlier in the Trenton and Moby, the Frederick and Tanya episode, it's why I believe that Trenton, more so than Darlene and everyone else there, was almost equal to Elliot or just a smidge behind Elliot as a hacker. She was just a better hacker overall. And this disproves it. I just don't understand why she trusted Elliot. Um, I guess she's not aware of his two personalities. I think she was smart enough to know that they were two personalities. But maybe she believed that in the the good personality that was Elliot. That, that's why she sent that information. Um, I'm hoping that is the case. I hope maybe there's a flashback of her reasoning. And there's some kind of connection that we haven't quite seen. It looks like maybe Romero was the snitch. It wasn't Trenton because the FBI did have a tremendous amount of inside information as we saw at the end of season two. And it wasn't something like quick, like they were able to break those other F society guys. It's like it seemed like they were watching everybody for a very long time. And at first, everyone thought maybe it was Trenton because her picture wasn't on the whiteboard. But it could have been Romero from the very beginning. It could have been Romero. Romero could have been the snitch. And if that is the case, it's a dark army has an inside man in Santiago. I think that's maybe how Romero died. I think the dark army figured out that Romero had the backups or key loggers or was working for the FBI and they couldn't control it. And that's why he got got. I think there might be a second FBI investigation going on. Or I could just be totally rambling here. Um, what does that mean? As Elliot yelled at our Darlene, e is just fine because they have e-coin. What happens when they decrypt those uh, E-Corp drives? What does that do for the economy? Does it set things right? Because that still puts E-Corp at the center of the economic system. Is there something in those drives that somehow, if Elliot were to go searching through it, that it could take down E-Corp? And there's still the dark army to contend with. So there's that. Um, plus, we still don't know why Darlene... Angela and Elliot aren't dead. They weren't, haven't been killed by the Dark Army and they haven't been scooped up by the FBI. We kind of know why they haven't been scooped up by the FBI, but at some point you would think that someone would have said, hey, why haven't you been scooped up by the FBI? I, um, I don't know because one of the underlying things and they haven't quite hinted to yet is does Elliot know that White Rose... Uh, is Minister Zhang and is responsible for the Washington Township plant. That's one of the unanswered questions because if Elliot knows this, then maybe it makes sense he went to the Dark Army because he wants to take down the Dark Army and E Corp, the people responsible for his father's death. But given that opening scene where we saw the very young Elliot just, at essence, his father dropped dead, I'm assuming that's what happened to uh, Mr. Alderson, the older Alderson, Edward Alderson, that he dropped dead in the movie theater. And then Elliot just freaking walked away and was he talking to the future version of Mr. Robot or was it another personality? Um, I don't know. But it just showed like a very disconnect, emotional disconnect. Was he actually Mr. Robot when he told his father, no, I can never forgive you? Was his already personality shifting there? I, you know, um, they need to explore that a little bit. But yeah, Elliot's a dick. Elliot's a dick. He's an asshole. I've said at the beginning, there are no heroes on this show. And even if Elliot were able to somehow figure out a way that exposes the Dark Army and E Corp responsible for, in some sense, the 71 buildings blowing up, or in essence, Tyra Wellick, uh, what then? What are the repercussions then? Um, the only thing I can think of is maybe he goes after the Washington Township plant itself. Because that was something that we saw the last episode where Minister Zhang, uh, White Rose, basically told um, told uh, Philip Price, you know, I had to ask you twice to protect my plant. And not only were you going to name your successor, but you're going to make sure that my plant gets out of the country into con to the Congo. So the only reason I can think maybe that's why Elliot and Darlene and Angela are still alive is to make sure that no shenanigans happen and that his plant gets out of the, out of the country and then they can die. 
I don't know that there's so many unanswered questions out there. Um, I really honestly did like the episode. I think I like the fact that it's so much Elliot considering that we didn't have really have so much Elliot the last couple episodes that there's been other characters, which has been fine, but you know, um, we're getting down to it. You know, it's episode nine and then it's episode 10 and we won't see everybody until next year, and then it's two more seasons. So it'd be interesting to see how far they go. I do finally like the fact that the National Guard's in the street and there's a curfew at nine. It's finally some sense of reality. It, it took them a long time to do that. I would think the Guard would have been in sooner in the city of New York. New York is looking really trashy. It's looking like the 70s New York, that gritty New York, the New York means New York, the uh, uh, the New York from uh, was it uh, Escape from New York? All those old seventy New York movies. The even the um, Urban Cowboy, where there were movies that would you know they would have them in the background. Even if it wasn't really like a nitty gritty movie, you could see like the kind of just that little bit of the urban decay. No matter how much they touched it or tried to get the best shots, the urban decay of New York. And it's really looking like that. It's looking really dangerous out there. Uh, people are just living out on the streets. Trash is everywhere. Stuff is not really quite functioning properly. Not even the guy you pay to burn your trash really burns your trash. Um, <laughs> so it'll be interesting. Also, it's interesting that Elliot has a good relationship with his landlord. I know some people in New York have that. But from my understanding, most people don't. <laughs> so that's another weird thing. But overall, I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, I liked the pause. I liked the fact that they, they took time to show, you know, Angela's a completely broke person. Darlene's a broken person. Elliot's a broken person. The human toll of being responsible for the death of thousands. And then you see in the propaganda that, you know, White Rose hinted out about America. You know, remember the 71. And... You know, are we seeing the drum marches of war? I mean, we really didn't see any, like, new stuff in the background. Um, that rhetoric, 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 rhetoric. He didn't see any war talking, any new stories in the background so much. But you just kind of saw the misery. People are wearing masks because they don't want to get diseases, I guess. They can't afford to get sick. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there's not much else to say. Um, I'm going to have to probably watch it over again, especially about the uh, whole Back to the Future 2 part. There's, again, Sam and Smell messing with us. That There's no time travel, people. There's no time travel. But I'm definitely back on the Washington Township plant. Might be a MacGuffin. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what the next few episodes bring. I think they're going to be very nail biters. Um, I think the tension's ratcheted up. There wasn't a really horror-esque moment in this particular um episode which was weird because pretty much you could see pieces of horror elements in all the previous seven episodes but not this one i might have to look at it again maybe it's invasion of the body snatchers i don't know um i'm gonna have to look at it again and see i didn't really nothing jumped out to me but that's it so i do have the giveaway i do have a random person oh where is the piece of paper So this random giveaway, uh, the giveaway for this is a $50 uh, trunk club, which is the same subscription box that um, Elliot used in the show. It's a $50 gift card for that. And that person whom I will be messaging to, messaging to is Miguez Rocco. So Miguez Rocco is the winner of this uh, third giveaway, the trunk club uh, giveaway. And... Um, so I'll be messaging him and or her, messaging that person, letting them know that they're the winner. Next episode, episode nine, is the five nine flag, whether it be a t-shirt, the flag itself. Um, I did see the flag itself. I'm gonna have to find it again. But the a five nine, uh, the five nine hack flag that you see in the background in different places, uh, will be the episode nine giveaway. And the episode ten giveaway is gonna be twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin. $20 worth of Bitcoin will be the random winner of episode 10. So episode 9 is the 5-9 hack. Episode 10 is $20 worth of Bitcoin. And the winner of this episode, episode 8, don't delete me, is Miguez Rocco. Uh, and he won the $50 gift card to Trunk towards the Trunk Club subscription service. So thank you all for watching and listening. Uh, thank you, Jim Welk. 
Camille for watching this time around. And uh, until next time, okay? Thank you, friends. Hiroja Shai blocking off.